Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the latest update of Procreate. It's a new update, and the version is 4.3. With this version, we now finally have a text tool. I assume many Procreate users must have waited for this for a long time, and I can tell you, it's really amazing. So in today's video, I will introduce this new text tool, and there are also some other new options added, such as blend mode and new brush settings. And there's also an animation function, which is a very interesting feature as well. So I'll talk about all these new features added to Procreate today. Alright, first, I'll talk about a text tool. And when you want to add text, tap the gear icon at the upper left, and you should see Add Text here. The four from the top, so you start from there. You should see something like this on the screen. So this time, I'm going to type in Amity. Then you can position your text by touching somewhere on the screen, but if you want to edit again, you can just tap your text to edit again. When you select all, you'll see an option here that says vertically, so for writing vertically. Right now, because it's in English, it's just that the texts are tilted 90 degrees clockwise, but when you have Japanese letters, they will be written vertically. And when you want to change the font or size, tap the Edit Styles button in blue, which will then show you all the options you can choose from. You can adjust your size, and there are also options such as kerning and tracking. Kerning is about the spacing between letters, and tracking is also about the spacing between letters, and it's a little difficult to explain the difference between kerning and tracking, but basically, I recommend using kerning to adjust the spacing as you like. And when you tap this button here, all the letters are capitalized. There are fonts by default, but I'm going to show you a demo using the one I installed this time. And here, the dialog box shows up at the bottom like this. So adjust your canvas by moving it up so it's easier to edit. This is the only thing I find it a bit tricky, but once you're used to it, you should be fine, I think. Next, when you want to add colors to your text, tap your text to activate. And select the color button here at the upper right, and slide your pen as you wish to change the color. And when you want to change your text, you could tap them just like we did earlier. But another way to do it is to tap the layer panel. And you should see an option that says edit text. So you can also add or change text from here as well. There's one more thing added to the layer panel, as I showed you just now, and it's called Rasterize. About Rasterize function, when you tap it, the text data of the letter gets converted into an object data. So when you do it, you can no longer edit your text. So that's what Rasterize function does. And things you could do with the use of rasterize function include, for instance, when you choose a verb option from select, you could deform letters like this. Well, these are no longer regarded as letter data, so it's pretty much the same as fill. When it's only a text data, you can apply a verb feature. So when you want to deform your letters, you need to rasterize. There's one more thing I want to explain about the use of rasterizing. So even though I objectified earlier, I put them back to text data. 
From the color fill option, you could also just tap on the color you like and throw it in like this. And this lets it rasterize automatically, meaning that you no longer have a text data. So this is something I want you to remember. If you want to change the color while keeping your text selected, choose a color from the upper right. I think it's easier to remember that when you change the color of each letter, it gets rasterized. Alright, now using this text tool, I want to create design work as an advanced edition. Open the hamburger photo from earlier and start a new text. Tap Add Text from the upper right and type in Tomato. You know, since we had an uh, update on text, I've added around 2000 fonts. There are just way too many, and it's too bad that I can't categorize them. Also, I added some Japanese fonts, but all of them are written in English, so it can be a bit confusing, but I hope one day they'll be in Japanese as well. Okay, so I added the text that says tomato and adjusted the color. When you want to adjust the size, you can also do it by tapping the arrow mark from the select button. Doing this won't rasterize and it will be just recognized as regular text data. Next, I use the liquify tool to deform the letters. From the button at the upper left, which is blue in color right now, or the liquify option from the adjustment panel, use expand and pinch functions to expand the middle part of the text and to make it look more like a tomato. I want to add the color to this tomato, so add a new layer from the plus button at the top, select it and tap clipping mask. Choose different colors and I'm going to add some highlights and shadows. Alright, just like this, you can easily add some text to the burger to make it look like an illustration. It can be done quickly, so I find it amazing and I feel that you can do so many things just with Procreate. Okay, next, I want to show you how to import fonts as mentioned earlier. Pull out the panel and you should see Import Fonts at the upper right. So select that, which will then open the app called Folder, where you can access iCloud Drive, etc. So if you have fonts installed here, you could easily import them. Once you do that, you should see them in the folder on the left here. You could use this way, but I actually use a different app for importing fonts. There is a free app called Document, and I usually use this app. It's an app for managing your apps. You can access Google Drive and Dropbox from here. And since I put all of my fonts in my Google Drive, I open this document app next to Procreate using a split view, then drag and drop to import fonts. So I'm going to show you how I do it step by step. First, choose fonts you want to import from the document on the right side. Tap Edit and select as many checkboxes as you want. Then, long tap, drag and drop them into Procreate. It should show you a green button, which means they imported your font successfully. Just like this, the fonts are imported. When you want to import many fonts all at once, 
It's quicker to open the document app on the split view, choose fonts, and import them. Regarding a way to choose all fonts on the document app, you can just go to the file, tap edit, and select all at the top, which will then enable you to choose and import all at once. Okay, I talked about how to use a text tool, and now I'll introduce the blend mode, which was also added as a new feature. Select a layer, you can see a layer S next to the checkbox. So tap it and the blend mode should show up. And color comparison dark is newly added and also the one next to it, color comparison bright. The color of the cheese changed slightly just now, but keep paying attention to the cheese. There are also new options for contrast where there used to be only three options, but now we have the fourth option that's vivid light, as well as a linear light, pin light, and hard mix. So four of these are newly added. Using this hard mix, the color of the cheese changes a lot, as you can see. It gives us the impression that it's cut nicely. I wonder if you can see. There's also this new feature added to the blend mode called Split, which can be found in the Absolute Difference box. I'm honestly not sure how this works yet, so I'm going to do some research on it for a bit and explain it in later videos. But yeah, these are 7 new features added to blend mode. Next, we have new features in brush settings. It's a function called smoothing, and I'll show you what it is. This time, I'm using a studio pen. Choose black and create a new color on top, and I'm going to work on it. You can edit brush settings by tapping here, where it lets you adjust details and there is a new category called Smoothing in the Pencil folder. I'm going to draw with 0% smoothing. I'm going to draw a straight line, but I'm going to draw with different levels of writing pressure. Then you can see the line gets thicker suddenly from this thin line here. This is what it used to be, and the new smoothing function helps improve this part. I'm adding some notes in red so it's clear. Okay, now let me put 100% for smoothing and draw. What happens is, again, with different levels of writing pressure, but the line isn't as bad as the last one. The part that transits to the thick lines looks smoother. Hence, it's a smoothing function. When you set it 100%, it's almost like drawing without peak and trough. So I think it's better to set it lower. I find 30-40% to the best. So it draws the line smoothly and perfectly, connecting the parts between the thin and thick lines as you can see. So yeah, I recommend around 30%. Okay, so that was about the new brush settings, along with the introduction of smoothing function. Next, I'm going to talk about GIF animation, which is also a new feature. I'm going to work on a new canvas, so open a new canvas. About GIF animation, it helps export each layer and connect them to make it an animation. 
From the gear icon, tap the share button and you should see animation GIF at the very bottom. So now I'm going to make a GIF animation. Add a new layer and I'm going to draw an apple. Then open another new layer and add it on top of the first canvas slightly misaligned. Then add a new layer again, change the color and repeat this process over and over. Just like this, I created 10 layers of apples, but I'm going to export them as a GIF animation. A way to do this is to tap the gear icon at the upper left, select the share button and tap GIF animation where they connect every layer to turn it into a video. The part where it says frame on the screen means animation speed. The more you slide the bar towards the left, the slower it gets, and the more you slide the bar towards the right, the faster it gets. Regarding the size for exporting, there are two options. One is web optimized and the other one is full size. And this time I'm going to go with the full size option. Save the photo, which will be saved to your camera roll. Just like this, GIF animation makes your painting a lot cuter. I feel that this GIF animation has a lot of potential depending on your creativity. So go ahead and try when you have time. Okay, that was the introduction of a new GIF animation function. And I think that was all about the new features added to the latest Procreate 4.3. I personally love the new text tool function, so I'm hoping to make more videos using this tool. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up as it really cheers me a lot. And please subscribe! Thank you for watching! Bye bye!